Anyway, um, I think we're at the bottom of the hour or past the bottom of the hour, so I will kick off. Um, so I'm Peter Robinson. Um, I've been a Fedora contributor for a long time. Um, I started hacking on ARM for fun 10 plus years ago. Um, I'm the Red Hat Edge and IoT lead architect um, and originally from Oz, but now based in London. Um, and with COVID and various other bits and pieces, it seems I very rarely leave London at the moment. Um, <laughs> yes, Matthew. Well, you know, I had, I, I literally put these together 15 mi minutes before um, my talk and I didn't have time to actually work out where the new slide template was. So um, yes, yes, I don't disagree. Um, so Pinebook Pro, I had a bunch of people in the lead up to Fedora 34 when we finally got it working go, oh, but that stuff's been upstream for ages. Why does it work on Fedora? Why is it taken so long? Um, and it turns out people's ideas and theories about upstream differ very or widely vary. Um, and in fact, most of it was upstream, but if you want to do like all the different components, so all the boot firmware is open source. There's at least three different firmwares there. Um, you know, kernel and hardware support, graphics drivers, I signal them out specifically and I'll go through them separately. You know, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, firmwares, audio configurations, and a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to be upstream for it to just work um, wasn't actually there. And so people's, and like you even go and look at the Manjaro that shipped um, out of the box on the device, and you go and look at their kernel, like it's not all upstream and they have like patches that are with, you know, commit comments, which is like, oh, this is an upstream. Uh, this isn't upstreamable at all. This needs a whole bunch of rework. And so like people think things are upstream, but people like the difference between like a, an OS that ships out of the box with a whole bunch of other integrations and what have you versus, you know, something like Fedora where you install it later. Um, the amount of work that it takes to actually, you know, upstream a new device. And even like the latest, you know, Lenovo laptops and, you know, tier one x86 devices often need a vast amount of work each cycle um, to get things upstream. Thankfully with, you know, those style of devices, they tend to be actually dealt with by the hardware vendors and are upstream by the time the hardware ships to actual end users and starts to be consumed. But a lot of the cheap um, devices like the Pinebook Pro, the company that makes them, Pine64, depends on a vast amount of the community to actually do the upstreaming work and the integration work and the enablement work because they don't employ software developers to deal with this. Like they basically just throw things over the fence, um, get someone in the community to glue together an OS for a particular device so they can ship something that works out of the box. Um, but, but like none of that is upstream at that point. And they depend on like users like myself being able to access schematics and work out, you know, how USB ports are wired up and how sound is wired up and any of the bugs in their layout and various other bits and pieces. So there is a whole lot of work to tie it all together and make it just work. Um, so boot firmware is the first one. It's obviously the first thing you see when you turn on the device. Um, it's now mostly upstream. Um, the key U-boot work was done by me for the Pinebook Pro and I went through a number of revisions of that to get it upstream. 
Um, I've worked with other U-Boot community members to add a display output on the embedded display port so that we could light up the screen and get early like Grub and various other bits of output. Um, someone else, we had an issue in Fedora 33, which absolutely stumped me for ages. Um, like USB ports are quite complex. Like what a lot of people don't actually realize is to support USB 2 and USB 1 on USB 3 interfaces, um, they actually have a built-in USB 2 and USB 1 host controller. Um, why do we need USB 1, you ask? Well, you know, keyboards and various other bits and pieces aren't actually USB 3, they're USB 1 still, because you know you don't need to push huge amounts of data over them. Um, so 12 megabits is enough and you still have to have USB 1 support, surprisingly enough, to be able to use a keyboard. Because if you plug it in, it into an external USB port um, that is USB 3 compatible. If you don't have the other drivers there, um, the other controllers embedded within that actually don't light up and nothing like your keyboard won't work. Um, and so we had an issue where over a single um, physical or fee interface, um, USB 1 and USB 2, um, and in the firmware, Basically, that there was dependency problems, and there's a bug, and it would actually stop Linux from booting. And so that issue is still there. Fedora's carrying a separate patch for that at the moment, um, while they work out how to address it upstream. Um, but you know, there's also a lot of polish I like to do. Um, you know, get early LEDs lighting up, so when people press the power button, they know that the device is turned on while the firmware loads and things like that. Um, one of the other people that I work with closely on some of this stuff is actually supporting the UEFI, um, working on enabling UEFI GOP um, support so that we can actually have a shiny boot sort of power on, get the logo, end up at the desktop, um, similar to the way um, you know a Lenovo laptop works these days with Fedora. So um, I'm not sure we'll get that there for 35. Um, but yeah, so, you know, there's still like, it works actually quite well now, um, but you know, there's still a bunch of work to do. Oh, and the other thing we're working on is the ability to use FW Update Manager to be able to update that firmware on the SPI flash. And the patches for that landed upstream in FW Update Manager, um, last week, I think, or maybe early this week, I forget which one. Um, and so the next phase of that is actually producing um, firmwares and what have you, and eventually we'll even have UEFI secure boot, um, as opposed to just normal UEFI, um, and a bunch of other functionality um, in our U-boot builds. So like we'll be able to, should be able to do a mostly end-to-end update process for that. Um, kernel and hardware, we're mostly there on this. Um, I'll go into the display stuff in the next page. USB mostly works. Um, we've got some issues with USB-C. Um, been working with a couple of people and it looks, so US, like actual data USB over USB-C works. Uh, display port over USB-C has issues, I'll get to that on the next page. Um, power delivery works with, has worked out of the box with Fedora 34 with some specific charges, but not with others. I think we have finally got to the bottom of that. Um, and I'm hoping when I get time, um, I actually bricked my Pinebook Pro a few weeks ago dealing with firmware updates um, and I've got to take it to pieces so I can, um, run recovery on it and get that back. Um, so I'm hoping to get time to do that this weekend, but I think we should actually have power delivery and charging over USB-C working now. Um, there is a patch I need to test um, and provide feedback on, but fingers crossed, we, we may have that shortly. Um, and then the thing that like, obviously still needs some work, power utilization, battery use, um, suspend and resume and a bunch of things like that. Um, 
I think it suspends, but it doesn't resume. Um, but again, it's a really hard problem to debug. And sometimes, you know, you'll have a USB controller or a sound uh, codec or something like that that doesn't suspend or doesn't resume properly. Um, and so suspend resume ends up being a, like a huge rabbit hole digging through kernel problems, fixing things, um, patches, so on and so forth. So um, yeah, we still have some work there and I know a few people are looking at it, um, but I don't have a huge amount of time at the moment. Um, and so like I need to focus on specific things. Um, display, what do we have? Well, we've got full accelerated 3D Wayland. Um, some of the amazing community in this space is working on more and more improvements. Um, I'm hoping actually we'll have OpenCL support before too long as well. Um, so there's more speed and improvements coming there all the time with each new Mesa release and each new kernel release. Um, the embedded display port display works. So obviously that's pretty useful um, for a screen, uh, for a laptop, sorry. Um, we've been working on, and this ended up being a bigger rabbit hole than I ever expected it to be. Um, so um, Javier uh, Martinez, one of a, a fellow Red Hatter that I hack on with some of this stuff um, has done, I think four patches now, most of which are upstream. One's coming in 5.15, um, a bunch landed in 5.14 and we've got the basics in um, 5.12, 5.13 that I backported. Um, but that gives us the early boot output and the frame buffer handover. Um, previously, we would get the firmware and grub and then the screen would go black until GNOME showed up. Um, so that that's um, there, but as we dug into this, we were trying to kill off um, legacy frame buffer support in Fedora as a whole. Um, and like using the Pinebook Pro in particular as the test platform for a um, bunch of that. And we discovered that like, again, like upstream kernel people were like, oh, you know, most of that work's just done. Like it should just work again. Um, but actually, as we dug into it, and actually when we disabled config FB, um, everything broke. Like, and so there's a bunch more work to be done there to actually finish that off. Um, but that will actually get rid of a large pile of unmaintained Linux code in Fedora um, and give us the ability to do um, things like Wayland in the very early boot process and, and things like that. So there's some certainly some advantages for that. Um, and one of my many little Fedora side projects is, you know, how we can actually, um, like a lot of the ARM stuff, and I think very little of the ARM stuff, um, everything supports Wayland on the ARM um, GPU stuff. And we've got a few GPUs that don't support Xorg at all. Um, and so like I've been looking at how we can drop the entire Xorg uh, dependency stack um, and slim things down some more for things like um, Fedora phone stuff and things like that. Um, and then, where's my thing gone? Um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, well, <laughs> this, this, this one is, um, so Broadcom about four years ago, um, in 2017 sold off um, their IoT, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi division um, to a company called Cyprus, um, which has since been bought out by a company called Infineon. And then just last year, Broadcom went and sold off their um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth IoT business unit, again, don't know how they can do that, um, to Synaptics. So the B BRCM FMAC combined Bluetooth Wi-Fi modules, um, which everyone thinks are Broadcom, are actually three completely different companies depending on um, which module it is. Broadcom themselves primarily now and 
primarily back in 2017 when they sold off the rest of the business, kept enough Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, for high value customers, AKA Apple um, and Dell and companies like that. Um, we, it took me 18 months, but we now actually have a close working relationship with Cypress of Finian. Um, and they are now doing regular releases every six months or so of their Wi-Fi firmware so that we get across all their range of the um, Broadcom IP, um, you know, regular security updates and CVE updates across the entire Linux community. So in Linux firmware for all their Wi-Fi IP, um, we're working with them um, on Bluetooth to get all the Bluetooth firmware stuff upstream, which means um, a bunch of problems that we've had with things like, you know, the Raspberry Pis up to um, the Raspberry Pi 4, but not including the Raspberry Pi 400, um, should have when that lands um, upstream. Um, and it was due to be July and they've had some team changes. So that's been delayed a bit, but we're still working with them on that. Um, the problem with the uh, Pinebook Pro and also the Raspberry Pi 400 um, is that that Wi-Fi, while it's a, a BRCM FMAC module, um, is from Synaptics. And Synaptics don't believe they have anyone in the Linux community that is actually using their Wi-Fi. And so they refuse to publish at the moment um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth firmware. Um, and so I've got a contact there and it looks like we're going to have to get their legal involved and various other bits and pieces. Um, I've been working on that a good six months now. Um, I reckon it's another 18 months before we, or 12 to 18 months before we get that fixed properly, um, which is obviously a huge problem. Um, I'm pulling in favors and friends and various other people across various different bits and pieces that are using Synaptics hardware to try and get other companies to lean and poke and push to assist us in this process. Um, but at the moment, um, the bro and like the Synaptics side of the IAT, or like the Synaptics IAT division are not engaging well at or very much at all and it's glacial um, process there. So I have no idea when the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth will work out of the box um, in Fedora on um, the Pinebook Pro. And that is interesting, but unfortunately being sort of proprietary firmware and a particular module and having a three-way company um, interaction um, certainly makes that stuff interesting. Um, it takes a lot of my time behind the scenes um, dealing with these and it's not just Cyprus and you know Synaptics and Broadcom here that I deal with but other companies that deal with you know firmwares and things like that um, and it does take a lot of my time um, nothing to do with my day job um, behind the scenes um, getting that done but like huge shout out to the work Cyprus has done with us um, because that's fantastic. Um, and when we got the first firmware update, I think it was November last year published, like some of the firmwares that they updated were six, seven, eight years old in like the upstream Linux firmware. Yeah, we had some dated uh, 2012, 2013, 2014. Um, and I just can't begin to imagine how many CVEs were fixed um, in that sort of eight year gap with that hardware. But like, even that just takes a lot of time. And, but you know, the whole Linux ecosystem um, ultimately benefits from that. So while it takes a lot of my time, um, I feel it's a valuable wider community problem that needs to be solved. Um, audio. All of the drivers are upstream. 
Um, it needs the UCM profile or two. Um, in fact, it'll ultimately need three when we support Bluetooth for Bluetooth audio. Um, some of the pieces are up there for UCM profiles for the various uh, codec chips and various other bits and pieces. Um, I've started writing the rest of it. I just haven't had a lot of time in the last couple of months to finish that up. Um, it's slow and complicated, but I'm hoping to have that upstream for Fedora 35. Um, at the end of August, things should take a little bit of a breather and I should have a little bit more time um, to spend before my renovations and various other time consuming things kick into the next phase. Um, so fingers crossed I can get that done in September. Um, what else? Um, well, so they, they state there's like an open source firmware update process for the keyboard and trackpad. There is, it's terrible. Uh, Richard Hughes um, of FW Update D fame has written initial support to do it properly. Um, the problem we have there for publishing it to Linux vendor firmware service is there's different firmwares depending on the physical keyboard layout and the firmware doesn't have an identifier in it. So which one is which? Um, and so when to be able to publish it to Linux vendor firmware service and have it automatically just happen, um, we need that identifier to be able to update it automatically. Otherwise, um, EU layouts will get US layouts and vice versa and they'll be grumpy people. Um, there's a way of doing it by hand by feeding it into um, Linux vendor firmware service. I need to sort of document that. Um, I was actually planning on doing a follow up blog post on with links to all the various different patches and things that we've done since um, Fedora 34 went GA um, so people can, you know, sort of follow along. Um, the EEPROM chip, um, the published version of the chip should be able to have uh, unlimited amounts of um, updates applied. It seems that whether, I'm not sure whether it was Pine64 or the company that made the keyboard itself um, changed that chip out to a chip that can be only updated eight or 12 or something like that. It's a limited amount of times. Um, so that's some outstanding work um, that we need to sort of document and sort out. Um, and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other pieces of polish where you know people want to be able to do certain things. But for the most part, you know, everything like the vast majority of it works actually pretty well now. Uh, we have the battery charging indicator works now since Fedora 34 GA. Um, we push that out with the 512 kernel rebase. Um, there's been a bunch of other fixes. Um, the camera on board works. Um, so yeah, I think it's now like um, I'm going, to, I'm planning on doing like a bunch more polish for the Fedora 35 time frame. Um, hopefully, like you know, things like the sound and stuff like that. Um, but you know, overall, it's not perfect, but like it's certainly very usable. Oh, the other one was um, we should have support at least in like G, G Streamer, so things like um, Totem Video Player and stuff like that. We should have support for offload acceleration for a lot of the video codecs. Um, there's more support for codecs landing upstream or has landed upstream. Um, so just need to work out how we can tie all of that in. So things like um, video conferencing or, or watching movies or what have you um, uses the offload engines. Um, again, that gives better battery life and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a bunch of pieces to tie off and fix up and clean up just to get everything 100% there. Um, but I feel we're probably about 80% of the way. Um, how can you get involved? All the, um, you can see I used an old set of slides um, because there's no previous contributing slide. The usual one, Fedora IRC, Fedora mailing lists, um, various other bits and pieces. Um, obviously upstream um, for, like things like kernel and other patches. Um, so yeah, 
do we have questions? I don't know how the questions work. Ha, huh, actually, now I found it. It's event versus session chat. Who knew? Um, what's the relationship between the Pinebook and the Pinebook Pro? Um, basically, only that they were made by the same company. Um, the Pine original Pinebook um, has an all winner A64 chip in there, which is the same as in the Pine phone and the original Pine 64. Um, it is mostly upstream and mostly working as well. Um, it has a completely different Wi-Fi module that has completely different problems. Um, and I started hacking on that the other day and went down a massive big rabbit hole and ended up with all these different Wi-Fi modules um, so that I could improve the upstream support for a, a series of about eight, 12 different Realtek Wi-Fi modules. Um, and yeah, so that was, um, uh, what GPUs don't support X11? Um, quite a number of them. Like I don't think the VC4 in the, um, yeah, offhand, I don't know. Uh, the Tegra stuff didn't used to support it. I don't know whether it does now. Um, the Mali stuff, I don't think supports it or doesn't support it well. Um, but like, quite frankly, it's mostly sort of end of life now anyway, and I personally don't really care about it. So I'm not actually doing any testing that's not on Wayland for the ARM stuff. Um, um, how can someone help getting the bits upstream so it doesn't all fall on me? Um, come to probably the Fedora I, um, IRC channel and or ping me on um, IRC and I can give people lists of things to do and general direction of um, where and how and what have you to contribute there. Um, be aware you'll probably need to have a relatively good understanding of kernel contribution, um, but I can help out wherever possible and I'm quite happy to be CC'd on patches to give acts and feedback and various other bits and pieces. Um, yeah, so um, so yes, it's um, we're, we're, with the Pinebook Pro, we're mostly there, um, I believe, but I missed a session on the Pine phone yesterday um, and there's a bunch of work happening there as well. Um, in similar method to this, um, like there's some early firmware stuff that um, needs a bit of work. And I actually enabled the OpenRISC 1K cross compiler in Fedora the other day. Yeah, that was another rabbit hole. When, you know, to actually get things working, you actually have to do um, bootstraps on cross compilers for weird architectures. Um, so yeah, like, there's a bunch of different stuff there. Um, let me stop sharing. So yeah, I, I don't see any more questions. And I think we're over time as well. So thank you everybody. <laughs>